Good morning guys, welcome back to day two. We are up nice and early, but not gonna lie, had a very rough night. Gotta get sued up now and drive to our new drive location and hopefully things work out how we are planning them to work out. But we'll see in the water of course. Peace. So at our first dive spot, we were mainly targeting crayfish. I quickly found a small one, which I thought could have been possibly borderline legal. So I dove down to the hole and went for it. And of course, I missed again. However, the hole wasn't that deep and I could feel the cray wedged at the very back. So I managed to grab onto it and wiggled around a bit and it came loose. Bill also managed to spot a cray, which was much bigger than mine. So I managed to find a few more crays, but what happened was honestly just embarrassing. <sighs> you guys can see for yourselves. <sighs> I reckon I definitely just need a lot more practice and I need to be much quicker and get close to the cray before I go for it, rather than just trying to grab them from afar like what I've been doing. However, it is safe to say that I have improved a lot since this day, but if anyone has any other tips for grabbing crayfish, I'd love to know. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't know, something amazing, I guess. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Anyway, after a few hours in the water, we decided to hop out and Daniel and I drove to a new dive location. So we were in the water for about an hour, swimming around, checking every ledge and hole. And honestly, things didn't look too promising. But I finally managed to spot a cray, and it looked legal. So I told Daniel, and he went down to have a look. And then all of a sudden, he comes rushing to the surface, claiming there was a massive cray down there. I was surprised at first because I didn't think it was that big. So I dove down again to check it out and I looked a bit over to the left and there it was, the massive cray Daniel was talking about. And I had no idea how I didn't see it on the dive before, but it was just sitting there and I was in absolute shock because I'd never seen a cray that big before. So we quickly caught our breath and discussed the plan of how we were gonna get it out. And we decided that Daniel was going to go down and try and snare it by its horns and then after that we do whatever we could to secure it. For those of you who are wondering, what in the world just happened? Let me explain. So Daniel managed to get the snare around its horns, so I quickly lunged forward and grabbed it, and wriggled it a bit, and it came out kicking like crazy. But then my hand slipped, and I thought we had lost it. Then all of a sudden, I see Daniel emerge from the cloud of sand with the cray, and we both just started screaming. The 
battle wasn't over yet, with Stuart had to secure it and put it in the catch bag. However, the creed clamped down on Daniel's fingers and was crushing them. And for those of you who aren't aware, crayfish have really strong claws that have the ability to break people's fingers. So we were trying to free his hand, but the swell was just too strong and knocking us around, making it difficult. Thankfully, he managed to slip his hand out of the glove. And thank God there was a little island we could stand on, otherwise it would have been even more of a struggle getting it in the bag. So, Daniel and I are just going to monster crate and there's one more skew in the hole, or two more. Man, we're gonna be eating so well tonight, but oh look at that, look at Daniel over there! So we're gonna catch our breath and then we'll go back and get the other ones. Monster tray, oh, oh yeah, my god! Oh, let's go Daniel! Yes. Dude! Ethan and Daniel have gone diving and they've left me here all by my lonesome. So we went back and got the other one, but it was nowhere near as spectacular. We also both managed to get a nice size Bandamore Wong, which was the first. So I managed to spot another cray, but once again, due to my lack of skill, I don't have to tell you. After that, we decided to call it because we were both exhausted and had a long swim back to shore and a long drive back to camp. Two hours later. Oh yes, you <laughs> liars. <laughs> <laughs> another one! <laughs> he, he got that one. <laughs> You got it, Eagle. Well done. Uh, I don't know, man. Guess it's going back. Oh, we have to put this one back around. I don't see my glasses. This is what a normal sized lobster looks like. <laughs> this is, um, yeah, it's <laughs> right here. Peace. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, guys, we are back at camp now. I am absolutely exhausted gonna take a break for a bit not sure if we're gonna dive later this arvo but see how i feel but i'll keep you guys posted six and a half hours later so on today's menu going? again we have might just start about i think i was talking when you started so on today's menu today <laughs> so on today's menu today we have of course crayfish again gonna be cooking up the smaller one today and save the big one for daniel's family and we're gonna wait as well to see if it's State record? Unfortunately, it wasn't, as the state record was five kilos and set back in 1986. This is the poo tube. Always remember to eat it because it is the poo tube. <laughs> Packed protein. Mm -mm -mm. So we're going to be trying something new today. We're going to be seasoning the crate after. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Some oil so that doesn't stick. That doesn't work at all because it's all rushed down to the end. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. And then I'm thinking we'll turn it after and then we'll put the butter and stuff in so it keeps inside the shell. But here comes our banded Morlong. How the hell are you going to cook that lobster? So I saw this in the Japanese restaurant one day. They put this on this dome so it cooks it in there. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, yes. 
just like yesterday. Uh, and then we'll put the butter in now. Oh, yum. So Bill's over there filleting the, is it abandoned mulwong? I think so. Or striped mulwong? Or dusky mulwong? <laughs> I don't know. Kitchen hand, Dr. Bill go. <laughs> Doctor. Soon you'll be a doctor. Oh, kitchen hand, yeah. <laughs> Deja vu. So with the more one, we're probably just going to put some Everglades original again, sprinkle that over. And then we'll cut some garlic up and just pan fry it and then see how it tastes. Chop these fruits on. <laughs> oh. Lucky last. Give it a flip. Okay, this is so close. Ah, there's a flip up in here. Ooh, that looks oh, yeah. really good. Mmm. Gonna give it a taste test. Hopefully, it's better than the dusky. If I can get it some meat. Hot. Mm -hmm. It's got a bit of a fishy taste, but yeah, it's definitely edible. I like it. So much better than the dusky. You try some, let me know what you think. I actually like it. Mm. <laughs> you don't like that fishy taste, do you? <laughs> yeah, not my type of fish. It's too mushy. Uh, not to me. Not for me. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Looks like I'm eating it all then. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna eat it now. I'm going to finish demolishing this cray, eating all the legs and stuff, and picking it all out. But yeah, after this, probably gonna crash and have an early night because we're gonna be getting up early again tomorrow to dive. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But again, thank you so much for watching. And I really do appreciate all your support and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.